Ladies and gentlemen, boils and ghouls, and those who remain undecided, welcome to the greatest show on earth. This is a show that has on the main stage religious piety, and over here, lots of distractions. What do you have to have for a show? Well, a show, silly, number one. And number two, in order to have a real show, you have to have a real audience of children. Wonderful, laughing, screaming, finger pointing, twisting, gnarling children. And this is a story that begins just like that. The year was 1692. The colonies was known as the New World. Oh yes. This little town, you would have heard of it, but only because of its association with witchcraft. But in those days, Salem, Massachusetts was filled full of Puritans who fled England because of religious persecution. And then they inflicted the same persecution upon others. Funny how that works, isn't it? Well, in this town, there was a minister who had one little girl by the name of Abigail and her cousin Elizabeth. Now they were just the sweetest little children sitting in the kitchen next to their maid. <clears throat> well, let's call it what it was. They had a slave. Her name was Tichaba. She was Caribbean. Now she was not a witch, but she was also not a Christian. We'll come back to that put a pin in it, as I, as I like to say. So, these two little girls and their friends, after all of the many years of letting this woman take care of them, tuck them in at night and, 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 and read them bedtime stories from the Bible and tell of lands far away in the Caribbean, they decided they wanted to have a little revenge on this woman. And why not? Her father's a minister, so she was quite the privileged little girl. Well, as it turns out, not only did they accuse Tichaba of witchcraft, they decided, too, that, oh, that was just not good enough. So they accused someone by the name of Sarah Good. Is that good enough? No. No, it was not good enough. Because then they accused someone by the name of Sarah Osborne. Now, what did these women have in common? They were all women. They were all on the outside of society. And two of the three were poor, the other was a slave. It was Sarah Good who was with child. She was expecting a baby. Her husband was a day laborer and she would go around to the houses in town entreating upon the good Christian neighbors to offer some morsel of food for her, for her unborn child, her husband, and for her four-year-old daughter, Dorcas. They also accused Sarah Osborne, an elderly woman who was poor, who was strange, who had few teeth in her head. They broke in, they held her down, and they looked for witch marks. Yeah, in those days, if you had any extra markings, it was a sign that the devil was there with you, that you were a concubine to Satan. So they brought these three women to court before the magistrate and Tichaba had had it up to here. She went, you know what? I am tired of these crazy girls. I am tired of taking care of those whiny little brats. Yeah, I'm a witch. What do you think about that? I'm a witch. And you know what else? Those women over here, these other women? Oh yeah, witches too. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, she ended up by being sentenced to prison where she lived to tell the tale. But I personally feel that she was really just tired of taking care of those children and ended up by surviving. The other two women, whom were poor, were devout Christians, and they entreated the court, please see how good and pious Christians we are. See that we would never offer our souls to the devil. 
And you know what was met with, with the girls? <laughs> the devil! <laughs> the devil! <laughs> they were sentenced. It may be noted that Sarah Good's child was born in prison and died there. And then they accused the four-year-old Dorcas of also being a witch. They brought her before the magistrate, and on fear of death, this little girl, not knowing what else to do, turned against her own mother, Sarah Good. It is said that these girls, one of the ways that they could tell there was a witch, was that they had seen a little yellow bird suckling on the finger of one of their accused. Hmm. Funny how that works out, isn't it? Well, mass hysteria began to boil. It began to boil, and it spread throughout the colonies, and more and more people were being accused, and more and more people hearing about Tichuba surviving in jail went... Distractions! Ah, uh, yes, I'm a witch. She's a witch, too. Don't look at me. Look at them. Don't look at me. Look at them. Look, see? I'm a witch. She's a witch. Unfortunately, the governor of Massachusetts found it expedient to set up a court judging witchcraft trials. Oh, it was all fun and games until somebody loses an eye, and then it's just funny. <laughs> and you know what? Who that eye got, got plucked out? He stopped it one year later when his own wife was accused of witchcraft. And then, oh, 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 oh no, uh, that's ridiculous, witches. <laughs> In the little town of Salem, Massachusetts, there were 20 lives destroyed. One of which, most notably, is a male. Now, most of the time, those accused were called, were, were of the female sex, they were, they were women. Giles, however, was not, and he was brought before the magistrate, and they said, Beest thou a witch? He refused to answer. And so they thought that they would get a confession out of him, and they put him on the ground at Gallows Hill. And they put a board down on his chest, and they would stack these rocks. And when it was a lot of pain and a lot of pressure, they would stop and say, Confess now, art thou a witch? In response to such heinous act, Giles only said, more weight. And they would compile more stones upon his chest, saying, art thou a witch? More weight, said Giles, refusing to implicate himself in a lie and those people that he considered good Christians. He refused. He became a real martyr. Now you would think that with such heinous acts, such, such fear that would lead people to destroy themselves, that we as humans would have learned 300 years ago was a long time by mortal standards. However, in the next video, we're going to be talking about something much more recent, the 1980s and the Satanic Panic. And now, a word from my co-host, my friend the devil, and Osmodeus. Osmodeus, I have a good one. What do you call a witch who eats only sand? A sandwich? No. She's malnourished. <laughs> Back to you in the studio. Thank you. And make certain you like and subscribe to this channel. And should you like, Patreon, it's in the link. I love and appreciate you. Till next time.